Damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! Shy, Shy versus everybody podcast, man. We got a special one today. I'm actually surprised that it happened because uh, <laughs> I saw that this guy was coming to Detroit. I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and just send a DM. Just, you know, it's, it's Instagram. Why not try? But we got, um, first, he's from South Central LA. You know what I'm saying? He's an actor, comedian, uh, writer, producer, Arthur, podcast host, and he's a dancer. Pitbull puppies. Uh, <laughs> nigga, whatever you need. So, yeah, I got babies for sale, nigga. I got a two-year-old. He's good with children. Oh, yeah. He's good. He listens. No. But no, we got the homie, man. We got OG. We got a legend in the game, man. We got Alice Thomas. What up, though? How you feeling, man? Man, I'm in the D. What's going on? Are you on, Mike? And is it okay to talk to you on something? Are you like the producer? Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. See you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm here talking to the, to the nigga out of bounds. I'm sorry, nigga just broke fourth wall and shit. I, I didn't know. No, it's all good. He last nigga. He's still part of it. He's still part of it. You. He's still part of it. Uh, uh, first, before we get to the what's name, we got a sponsor today, man. Uh, shout out to my, my dog, Deshaun uh, Cooper. Uh, King, King, that's a performance enhancement. Uh, if things ain't been going right in the bed, if you send that test and she left you on red, try King. The best male sexual enhancement brand on the planet. Specially formulated for men for, of color. No side effects, no damages besides the damage you're going to put on her. Okay. Can I please see this? This nigga is 30 minutes of jokes going through my head right now. So if so you, we got a, a a nigga enhancer. Yeah. Uh, So it's just for black men, so white men couldn't use it. So white, no. Pink dicks don't work with this? No, only black. Oh, okay. So, for black so basically, this is called King. It'll help you blow her back out. For sure. Oh, for sure. Okay. For sure, man. If, if things ain't been going right in the bed, you know, hey. So he's going back right in the bed and she's horrible at head. Yeah. Get you some king shit. Okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. For sure. Yeah. So get hard. I heard the niggas hustling. I know niggas that sell weed. I know niggas that sell heroin. I know niggas that sell pit bull puppies and cars. I did not know that niggas is hustling Viagra. Hey, shit. They is. hey but hold on. Came on it, though. They got one for the woman, too. Nigga. OMG Black. Okay. You need to explain to me how the fuck. Uh, so that's OMG black ladies. If if your stuff down there kind of you know ain't working right, ain't getting wet like you wanted to, you ain't feeling that sensation. Uh huh. OMG black. Get you some OMG black and you will flow like a river. <laughs> if the nigga can't swim, he bound to drizzle. <laughs> exactly. And what movie did I say that in? Oh, you said that on the wash. Right? Don't be a menace. Don't be, don't be. Oh, yeah. Damn. Don't be a menace. South Central. You knew my movie. I'm sorry. Don't be a menace. Yeah. To South Central. You drink. Chicken juice. Yep, yep, my yep. first movie. Exactly. I'm like, if you can't swim, you bound on the drizz down. Yo. Yep. <laughs> ain't that when y'all jumping them in? That's what I was yep. like. His name yep. is Ray. Yeah. He's in the game. If you yep. don't like it, yeah, no. you to get out the game. Yep. What? Yeah. That's what he's like. <laughs> Jump that nigga in, yeah, cuz. <laughs> Nigga, I'm still fucked up on this nigga to get your coochie extra wet. Yeah, so if y'all do it at the same time, then your weak dick and her dry pussy, power. Porn. Straight porn. Exactly. You will be Mr. Marcus and goddamn Angel Eyes. With right. this. So, fellas, if you want to go ahead, uh, their Instagram, um, go and reach Deshaun Cooper at I am Deshaun. He will get you a lot of these. You're right. So he delivered. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically dry coochie and little pee pee. Put these two together. It's it's porn immediately. Uh, yeah, you'll be you'll be you'll shoot up the club, my nigga. Yeah, okay. Magnum performance. I might have to do my research on these niggas. Yeah, I'm just not gonna take any pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I'm married. I yeah. got three kids, so my shit's working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, yeah. Shout out to this nigga. Man. What's his name? Uh, Deshaun Cooper. Deshaun Cooper. I'm not mad at you, bro. Yeah. You found a way, nigga. Yeah, for sure. Hey, when it comes to hustling something. He's going to do it. I, I'm not mad at him. Not to, sure. When you think about it, I never heard of a nigga uh, hustling sexual enhancement. Hey, uh, you say you, know, say you thought it was weed. I thought it was weed. Man. I thought it was King Kush and Oh My God Black. I thought, I don't smoke weed. So it sounded like a weed brand to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so that's that's today's sponsor of the show. And we will be giving away this to um as Thomas. That's if he wanted. You yeah. know, uh but you know what? I support you, brother, but I'm good right now. Okay, yeah. 
<laughs> I appreciate you. Man. So this be my luck. This motherfucker uh, backfire on you. And my dick go in towards my body. Hey, dick gonna sue me. Sue you. I'm gonna fuck around and end up fucking myself and shit. I don't know, but shout out to that dude hey, there, yeah. That must do, do a reverse. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Oh, man. But no, man, hey, like I said, we start off every podcast with Salute Me While I'm Here. A lot of times you wait for people to pass away to make that long Facebook post, that long Instagram, you know what I'm saying, post, mm -hmm. instead of showing them flowers while you can still smell them. Absolutely. But it can't be the easy answer. It can't be a kid. It can't be a lady. It mm -hmm. can't be parents. It got to be somebody out of that media circle. So you got somebody you want to go ahead and send some flowers to? Oh, you asking me to do that? Too? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. You, now you got to say it one more time. You said it oh, can't be who? It can't be your lady, kids, or parents. It got to be somebody out of that easy answer that you want to go ahead. Just give some flowers to while you can still smell them while you're still around. Wow. Um, Because a lot of times we wait for people to pass away and say, oh, we love him or we love her. You know, it's never... It's never. It's, it's actually, I love a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, More than one. I'm, a, I'm a relationship person mm -hmm. and it's all about relationships. I mean, that's kind of like um, the story of my career. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I never claimed to be the funniest dude ever, but I always kept relationships. For sure. For and, sure. That's, uh, that's, what it, that's what's enabled me to sustain, I mean, because I'm celebrating this year. I mean, this is my third 30, year, yeah, man, 30 30 30 anniversary of uh, t doing comedy and TV and film and stuff. So it's it's been a blessing. God's blessed me. There's so many, man. I mean, you know, somebody that I, I would like to give him his flowers because whatever they want to say about him, um, he's cool with me. Mm -hmm. And the brother gave me an opportunity okay. and opened up a door for me. And if it hadn't have been for him, I don't know where I would be in this business. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, Will Smith. Okay, okay. Yeah, Will Smith sure. is a good friend of mine. Uh, as you know, I was a writer on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, mm -hmm. 93 to 97. You know what I mean? I had only been doing comedy <laughs> six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, I only had two minutes of jokes. Yeah. I had $11 in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I, I caught the bus to the comedy club that night. Uh, sat in a 14 hour line just to go up and do three minutes on amateur night. Man. My man was sitting in the front row of the comedy club. Yeah. And uh, thank God he didn't slap me. Yeah. And uh, no, for sure. way before he was slapping people. <laughs> and uh, man, he just said, yo man, you real funny, man. My name is, I was like, I know who you are. Yeah, come on, like, man. Come on. My name is Alex Tommy. He says, yeah, man, I got this brand new TV show. I'm like, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I yeah. watch it every week. Yeah, yeah, it had yeah. only been on two years at that time. He's like, yo man, let me ask you a question. He goes, do you write? I'm like, shit, you got a pen? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I get to it right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? He's like, uh, well, do you think you can come down to help us with some funny stuff? Like what I just saw on stage tonight? Mm -hmm. I was like, hold on, let, let me check my schedule. Uh, yes, I'm available. Yeah. He goes, when do you think you can come down? I'm like, now? Yeah. Should yeah. I get a ride with you? Yeah. I caught the bus to this bitch. You yeah, know? for sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. literally the next day, I was at the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Right. And that opened up a lifelong, of, uh, you know, uh, relationships with so many people yeah. it opened up the doors for so many shows that came after that man that's dope. so if it hadn't have been for that little you know what i mean that little bone mm -hmm. that he threw me that little lob yeah, that yeah, he yeah. threw me yeah, i that, took that it and, good out of you. and ran with it for 30 years so man. will smith um first of all he deserved that oscar okay it yeah. was a crazy night um unfortunately what what happened overshined what he earned, yeah, for sure. But uh, again, like real friends, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Oh yeah. Five, five, his last name is not Christ, and mine isn't either. Yeah, exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? Uh, nobody got killed. Nobody got shot. He made a mistake. You keep it pushing. So you know, yeah. get those flowers out to him because you know, sure. if even if he sees this. Uh, you know what I mean? You never know. Yeah, I hope the way, you, man. The way Instagram and social media <laughs> yeah, is now, niggas yeah. be laying up in bed. For sure. like, Shit, and you see my name. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's just one person. There's a lot more, yeah. but since you sprung that question on me out of yeah. nowhere, hey, 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 that's I haven't is. really got a chance to thank him uh -huh. in his face like that. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Will Smith. For but yeah, for sure, because he the one who gave you a break. Gave me my like break, Like I said, you, were just, you just started yesterday. Come on, man. Come Let on. me ask you this, though. So you came in on season three. Mm-hmm. What season was it when you when they made the switch from light skin unveiled to dark skin? It's so funny. I the question comes up all the time, yeah. and the answer to that is, I never met the dark skin unveiled. Okay. If I had to put a timeline to it, yeah. I think she left yesterday. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I came in, it was Daphne Maxwell Reed. Okay. Who played the light skin? I asked that to to say, did y'all did you did you guys face any backlash from making that switch? Again, I wouldn't know anything about it. Okay. 
Because okay. I came literally yeah. after. I mean, I really don't know how many episodes yeah, 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 yeah. before me. But uh, I I was on the last four years. Man, because that's always that big argument in the, in the hood. Like, of course. Who's the best win? You know, exactly. all that stuff, man. You and know? I, it, it trips me out, too, because I was like, how are they going to pull that off? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that, that was wild. I honestly can't even answer it. Cause yeah, because no resemblance. Like, just... nothing. <laughs> and, you know, that'd be like you wake up and Aunt Viv is white. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's a classic show. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about this on my producer podcast. I feel like the two shows that helped out the black community that you've seen, like two figures as far as parents, Cosby, and Cosby and Fresh Prince. And you know what? I didn't realize it until I was older mm -hmm. and the show was over. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't realize when I was going to work every day, just being funny and having a good ass time. Yeah. I didn't know that we were an example for a whole no, generation that's watching right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? I'm in my 20s. We're just having fun, blah, 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 blah. Until, like, when I hit my 40s and, like, brothers would come up to me, like, random. Yeah. Like, I could be in a liquor store in Detroit. Yeah. I could sure. be at a strip club in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be getting some chicken in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah for sure. And a nigga find out I was one of the writers, he'd be like, like, real talk. Like, a nigga, it looked like he shot somebody yeah. that day. Like, man, hey. Straight up. Me Help me, like, man. Nigga, there wasn't no daddy in my house. No, for sure. Like, I turned on the TV mm -hmm. to watch Bill Cosby or watch, you know, you know, Uncle Phil mm -hmm. to see, oh, that's what black dads do. Exactly. That's what a father does. That's what a, like an uncle that's in somebody's life does. I we didn't realize that. Kind of like in, when that J. Cole song came out with platinum, mm -hmm. first line, first things first, rest in peace, Uncle mm -hmm. Phil. Yeah, 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 yeah. For real. You the only father that I ever knew. I'm like. It hit me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This nigga is putting this in lyrics. He, this is, <laughs> he's really, and how many brothers really felt that? Yeah. Because there was no dad in the house. I was very fortunate, and Will was very fortunate to grow up with dads in our house. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of the stuff that we wrote on that show, it was like from real experiences. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I remember times when stuff would be written, and I'd be like, no, 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 no. Like, a black dad wouldn't say that. Yeah, exactly. Or my yeah. dad wouldn't say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, he wanted, Will wanted people around him like myself mm. that could really come from a real black point yeah. of view. Even yeah, though to relate. it's NBC and these writers, I mean, some of the writers that I was writing with, because just for the people that don't know, every sitcom you ever see, there's about eight or nine writers. Yeah. And these are dudes that wrote some of the biggest shows of all time. I'm talking from good times to happy days mm. to, you know what I mean? To, you know, home improvement, whatever. Yeah. Um... A lot of times a white man or a white person can't speak mm -hmm. from our heart of what happens yeah, in our, our point of great view. writers, yeah. nothing against them, you know what I mean? Structure and all that, but you can't really say what yeah, my what, black daddy would say. What's that? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I'm in trouble, my dad's going to say something different from what exactly. you... Yeah. If I had to put it in real simple terms, uh, find me a nigga... Uh, they put his son in timeout. Yeah, exactly. From our generation. Nigga, yeah. Timeout is the Detroit Pistons versus the Lakers. Nigga. No, exactly. Timeout. Ain't no timeout. Like, what's no timeout? It's a whoop nigga. ass. It's a whoop ass, a fist in your face, yeah. a belt against your ass. You know what I mean? All right, so um, you, you, you're a father, man. Daddy, man, three yeah. times over. Yeah, so uh, I love it. Do you, do you, uh, you know, that same discipline that your yeah. dad showed on you? Do you reciprocate on your kid? Next question. Uh, no. No, I, no, I'm going to be real with you. Yeah. I'm going to be real with you. I don't spank my daughter. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. But I tear my boys up. Yeah, man. They gotta be. They gotta get that that tough love. Um, oh, my daughter's seven. Okay. Hi, Halo. She can do nothing wrong. She can do nothing, nothing wrong. Nothing. Nothing. My son, uh, trust he's two. Yeah. Uh, legend, he's five. Yeah. And yeah, I gotta spank him. I'm not doing what my dad. Oh, no, you ain't beat you. You beat him because you broke. My dad, <laughs> my, my dad whooped my ass, and he should be in prison now because of that. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, I was abused. I don't know how this nigga made it. Oh, for sure. My dad wore my ass just because he wasn't making the money he wanted to make at work. Motherfucker, like... No, I was... I was. They tore my ass up, but Man. you know what I mean? A lot of times when I'm out and about, one of the best compliments I could ever get is when people say, man, I could tell you were raised right. Exactly. exactly. And even though my parents aren't together anymore and they divorced a few years back after 35, some years, I still love them both. Mm -hmm. And they did what they did mm -hmm. and they did the best they could. Mm -hmm. But yes, I was spanked. Yeah. And uh, I am a real black dad and so is my black wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we, we tapped that ass. Okay? Yeah, for sure. There's no uh, bruises and uh, blood. Yeah, shit. yeah, no switches, no. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's love. Yeah, you man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I felt bad to with my uh my six-year-old for the first time. he Because he was just lying. I'm like, Aiden, like, don't lie to me. 
I'm just don't lie. And I was in the shower and I thought about it and just clicked. Like, he lied to me for a whole day. I came out the shower in drawers. It's high. He he looked like this never happened before. Oh, that's hilarious. I felt bad, but I just had to do it because I had to explain to him you can't lie to your parents. Absolutely. And I look at it at the end of the day, they're gonna know mm -hmm. and they do know that you love them. Yeah. More than anybody else on this planet. Mm -hmm. There has to be that kind of, you know, like as a man. I'm supposed to be the first love in my daughter's life. No, for sure. I am the example of what she what's going to happen with guys that are going to come onto her as she gets older. Mm -hmm. I hate to say this, but I saw a, uh, I was watching a documentary just recently mm -hmm. and they said, what do 98% of all young black men, 18 to 30 and young black strippers, mm -hmm. 18 to 30 mm -hmm. in America have in common? What's that? Daddy wasn't there. Yeah, no, for sure. Daddy wasn't there yes. for that 14, 15, 16 year old dude that was making dumbass decisions mm -hmm. at a young age that could change his life forever. We all knew those type of dudes. Yep. Exactly. Like niggas started getting in trouble when he was 15. He either damn near did life in jail, yeah. <laughs> uh, always been going in and yep. out, yep. always that fucked up situation, or these chicks that are on the pole by this. Yeah. And now he's looking 19, for somebody to replace that dad, but they don't know. What they needed love. Yeah. What the niggas needed was a hug. Exactly. What exactly. they needed is somebody to say, that's a dumb decision. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. It's it's horrible. I hate in our culture a lot of times that our young people have to figure it out on their own. Yeah. It's horrible that you have to figure it out on, mm -hmm. on their own. There should be some type of voice or reason. Yeah. Then for the most part, if you got a single parent, she mom at work. She's doing all she can. Yeah. Shout out to all the black women out there that have to be mama, daddy, grandma, and everything yeah. else. But that's horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, if that man was there, it takes some of the stress off the woman. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? I, that's a whole other show, and I can get yeah. to it. I don't want to look like I'm preaching. <laughs> no, shit, sure. but I'm just saying, man. No, that's I, how it is. I, 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 uh, I commemorate black love and people being together because it truly takes a village. Mm -hmm. I see how tough it is with me and my wife waving through yeah, the ways of sure. No, it's still hard. So I can only imagine yeah. what it is for a young black woman to have to do it on her own. That's why I say thank God, because my, my father yeah. had passed away when I was young. Okay. So it wasn't my mom, but I had brothers, I had uncles, right. I had people that kind of took that spot to be like, hey man, if you disrespect your mom, if you fucking right. up, get, get your shit right. Shout out to all the people that are listening and watching right now that they did band together yeah. as a family, as a unit, as a village mm -hmm. to help raise these kids. Because, you know, I'm not saying that all black people out there, not every black man in America that grew up without a dad ended up being bad. Exactly, exactly. Right? But the percentage is on yeah, the other high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, same thing with the women. If you if you went into wherever the big booty strip club is in Detroit, <laughs> and she said, you want to lap dance? You're yeah. like, no, I just want to talk. Yeah, exactly. Hug, um, give me a hug. When was the last time you spoke to your father? Yeah. You know what I mean? If she really broke it down to you, you'd be like, wow. Yeah. Just peaches just gave you the story. So now, so now do you, like, we related to those shows right. coming up. We saw Black Love, you know what I'm saying? We saw Black Love from Gina and Martin. Mm -hmm. We saw, like I said, even Family Matters, you got dad, mom at home. Do you think that's missing in today's TV that we don't Big see time. enough of that? Big time. You know? Unfortunately, man, when it comes to Black programming, reality took over. Yeah. Reality damn near killed sitcoms. Yeah, no, I did. But the reality got so goddamn horrible mm -hmm. and train wrecked. Yeah. And putting us in such a horrible light mm -hmm. that it's slowly coming back around. And again, not knocking all the people that do um, reality. Because exactly. yeah. they're not all like that. Yeah, so yeah, anybody's yeah. listening, I'm not saying they're all like that. But sometimes, be honest, man. Mm -hmm. You ever watch it and you've got, you're got damn near embarrassed? Be like, what the How hell? bad we look on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got somebody, somebody down here love it. The VA... The VH ones and the and the and the and the networks yeah, yeah. are loving it. Yeah, like these niggas show their asses and be <laughs> as ignorant as possible and keep the cameras rolling. But let me ask you this though: if they do bring back that classic type of TV show from the nineties, mm -hmm. do you think we will sit down and actually watch it? Of course, because I'm gonna be honest with you. It's like saying, so if good music does come back, you think we'll actually listen to it? Yeah. Yes, nigga. <laughs> Think if an earth, wind, and fire but came I, back, you think we'd listen I, to it? I, yes, nigga. I think I disagree you, a little bit. Oh, okay, but let me just finish. Okay. You can't deny true talent. You can't 
deny a real hit song. Mm -hmm. You can't deny a real funny comedian. You can't deny a real great TV show because there's talent behind that. Don't get me wrong. I get in this new generation, mm -hmm. their attention span is fucking That's all I was gonna say. one yeah. second. Uh, because they've been damn near groomed to listen to bullshit. <laughs> that they can't damn near can't tell the difference good from bad. Some of the rappers without mentioning their names, I can't believe some of this shit right, on the right, radio right, right now. working too. But if you ask an 18 year old, he goes, they love what are you talking about? Soldier Boy's the greatest of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, they love he's it. He's, top, he's my top five. I can't argue with a little nigga that that's all he knows. If in, if in your little 19 or 20 year old mind, <laughs> 21 Savage is the greatest. Yeah, it's not wrong. I almost can't, I, I can't even tell him it's wrong though. Is that because that's what he thinks that I'm gonna look like the old nigga that's hating. Oh hating, yeah, the old hating. And I don't wanna look like yeah. that. I'm just like I'm just being honest when I say that. Yes, there's there's you know what it is? There's a lane for ignorance now. Okay, yeah. Whether it's hip hop, yeah, whether it's, that, that it's lane, ratchet that, ass. That lane is huge. That lane is huge. Yeah. That lane is huge. And it's unfortunate. That's why I have to be in my kids' lives. Exactly. To, put to show them the difference. Again, I'm not completely knocking because they're, they're kids right now. because so they're going to be teenagers. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be hearing that ratchet mess. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. But trust me, my seven-year-old, by the time she's 13, she's still going to know who Stevie Wonder was. Yeah. She's going to know who uh, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire was. Yep, yep. She's going to know who, uh, uh, you know what I mean, uh, Babyface was. Yeah. She's going to know of this group called New Edition. Yeah. She's going to know of this nigga named Babyface. I, you can't deny. That's why I'm big on history. Yes, new shit comes around. I'm not knocking it all. But you got to yeah. know about yeah. your history and mixing up because if you're just full of ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> but you got, and you got to have those people that go ahead and put you in, in, your, in, your, in place. You got to have those right. people like, listen, I know you like this, but listen to this. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know you think LeBron is the man, but it was a dude named Michael Jordan that was doing And it was a nigga named Dr. J. Before yeah, him. exactly. It so, was a nigga named Bill Russell before him. He, yeah. I, I'm not lying to you when I say I was a history buff. Yeah. So my whole thing is, unfortunately, I feel like that's not either being pushed in sports now. Mm. I feel like it's not being pushed in our culture. Mm. I feel like niggas is just out there on their own, just being raised by wolves. Like, <laughs> you gotta know your past, yeah. man. But see, now with sports, it's just all about business and money. They don't give a fuck who it. did before them. But imagine That's the sad part. part. you could be if you if you were did your, yeah, did, yeah, no, for sure. Fast. That's all. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the smartest guy. I'm just saying, you know, you gotta know about your past. I, yeah, there's a young dummy to be like, man, who the hell is Martin Luther King? He here yeah, now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what, what, what? He did that in 1968. What that got to do to me? Yeah. You really want to know? Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have had that opportunity if it wasn't for that brother. Exactly. You yeah. wouldn't be walking into anyway. You wouldn't be able to pee in that bathroom if it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you definitely got to have somebody to give you a history and give you a game. Actually, I'm not knocking new shit yeah. at all. All yeah. I'm saying, and I and I appreciate new shit. Mm -hmm. I appreciate a new genre. I appreciate fresh new ideas. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be dope. Some of these young dudes, I like them. Mm -hmm. But man, don't deny your past. That's all I'm saying. You can't. You can't. Because people, you know what I mean? they just forget, man. They forget. And they, or they just don't give a damn to even. Or there's nobody to tell them. Yeah, that too. But if you really like me, like it was nobody necessary to tell me, listen to this. It's just like once I start, the first CD I bought my own money was a Juvenile 400 Degrees. Mm -hmm. So I fell in love because then, I, before then, I was listening to Kid Rap. I was listening to Criss Cross. I was mm -hmm. listening to MC it. Hammer. That's your generation. Once I heard yeah. Juvenile, I went back and started listening to Jay-Z. I went back, LL, Tupac, Big. Like, because I was, at that point, I'm like 11, 12. Now I really want to know about hip hop. So now I'm going back and listening. Knowledge. Yeah. knowledge is key. Knowledge is power. Yeah, yeah. And what that's going to do, it's only going to enhance and help you mm. with what you're going to do. Yeah, for sure. So you became a rapper and you tell that story. Yeah. Yeah, man. You're platinum now. This is, for example, you're platinum right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you tell your story. Yeah, man. My first album I bought was Juvenile 40. That would make me go, oh, wow, that was your first inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you end up becoming who you are. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to do homework. That's all. And that's what, that's what anything, like I say, it's with comic. Anything. Actor, actress, I'm sports. a student of the game, brother. Yeah. I know everything there was to ever know about Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, all the people that came before me. Mm -hmm. Give them their props. Speaking of being a student of the game, game, and back in the day, man, yeah. he was a dancer. Soul Train. Uh, let's be specific, nigga. <laughs> oh, whenever people say dancer, I have to be specific. Because well, yeah, when you say dancer, <laughs> you nowadays <laughs> niggas want to think stripper. Oh, this yeah. nigga did the split. Hey, it took you wrong. Man, it took you wrong. Nigga, I can't do the splits, nigga. I pull a hamstring, a park string, yeah. and everything else. No, nigga, I was... 
pop locking and break dancing. Yeah, for sure. Five to ninety. Let's get it right. Let's get right. He wasn't five to ninety. Soul Train, fifteen yeah. years old to twenty years old. Okay, so, so you, you was back know? there with Don Cornelius. Absolutely. How how was that experience like? Because you know. Man, Soul Train was everything for us. That was, was that was everything. that was that was it. It was no MTV. Yeah, it was no BET. No matter how big you were, whether you were Run DMC or Luther Vandross, nigga, <laughs> yeah, you, sure. you, you had to get your song and perform live well, Soul on Train. Soul Train. Yeah, and that was huge for me because I was a ghetto superstar. Yeah, 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 yeah. nigga from South Central LA. But I'm also that nigga. Oh, we see this nigga on, on Soul TV Train. Yeah. every Saturday morning. Going down the, Soul Train line. <laughs> nigga, come on, thug killers, crack dealers, everybody. Yeah. Why Soul Train? Yeah. It's huge for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. So, did you? What did you take from that experience? Did I like kind of like? Grow you as oh, I want to do something else different, or it opened up the door for me to really like, really kind of like the inside of entertainment. Mm -hmm. I didn't know yet that I was going to be acting. I didn't know that I was going to end up being a comedian. Yeah, I was just a pop locking and break dancing nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, next yeah. thing I know, there's stars that know who I am because they watch the show too. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when, like, when I first met Dr. Dre, when I first met Whitney Houston, when I first met Eddie Murphy, they're like, oh, it's the nigga from Soul Train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, these niggas know who I am. Man, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for the sure. The drug dealers in the neighborhood, that's the nigga on it. I was almost the equivalent. You always hear the stories, whether it was Chicago, whether it was Detroit, whether it was Brooklyn, whatever. We all got similar stories. Uh, the nigga that grows up in the hood, mm -hmm. But didn't get caught up into the street shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the street niggas protected him. Exactly. They was like, that nigga's gonna be a basketball player. Yeah, so that yeah, nigga yeah. is six five. The nigga's fourteen years Leave old. Leave him alone. That nigga automatically like they just protected him without even having to say protect him. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I was that nigga in my hood, but not really knowing what the fuck I was gonna do. Yeah, no. For, <laughs> this not, nigga's gonna be somebody. Because I know um you you went to a private school. Exactly. Did, did you ever feel like being from the hood, going to a private school, you you have a point to prove? Absolutely. I got teased for, yeah, I talk about it. Like my first five years of stand-up comedy mm -hmm. was just all about being the only nigga yeah, 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 in an sure. all-white private school, yeah, yeah, for sure. but coming home to the hood every day. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I just went, I was just around white kids and rich people for six or seven hours a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I went from bar mitzvahs to shootouts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? That's why one of my first jokes was by 13, I had been to more bar mitzvahs than barbecues. Yeah. Nigga, it was the truth. Yeah, yeah. Dude, my mother, my mother, I'm not lying when I say by 14, my mother, I had been to so many bar mitzvahs mm -hmm. that my mama custom made me my own yarmulke. Nigga, she painted out of a purple crown royal bag, nigga. I was looking like a black Jewish pimp at this white school. Man. Like, What's up, Alex? I'd be like, Shabbat Shalom, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Man. This is real true shit. Like, Man. niggas are like, how are you not in the Crips? How are you not in the Bloods? First of all, half my family was Crips, half my family was Bloods. Mm. They were like, well, what gang were you in? I was like, nigga, I was in the Cub Scouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, know fucking with it. Yeah. I, was, I was the Crip choreographer, nigga. <laughs> I was banging, uh, dancing, nigga. Yeah. I, I never went on a drive-by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My cousins and uncles and friends, everybody else did. Yeah. But my father kept me away from it. And like, like you said, you go back to having a I dad. I go back to a dad. Like, I always tell the story. Again, one of my first jokes that I used to do in the early 90s, I was like, well, people would ask me, so how did you avoid the gangs? Yeah. How did you, like, not get in the, the, the gang shit? I was like, my parents get me... So involved in extracurricular yeah, activities, you had time. I didn't have time for crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget. A nigga came up to me. I'm in sixth grade, and the nigga was like, "Nigga, is you down with the hood, nigga? <laughs> is you down with the with the hood, at?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I'm down with the hood." He's like, "You rolling with us tonight?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I'm rolling." I'm like, what y'all niggas doing? Yeah. They're like, nigga, we we robbing a liquor store. I'm just like, okay. What time? And they're like six o'clock. I'm like, nigga, I got the power rehearsal. <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah, I'm, you, you got any crimes y'all doing tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Later he's, like, he's like, he's like, in fact, we are, nigga. I'm like, all right, so what y'all doing? He's like, we doing a drive by. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. Like, what time? He's like, nigga, one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Like, yeah. Fuck, I got a soccer game. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga, I'm swamped. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, busy. I'm booked and busy. No, for sure. And that went into my life all the way till I was able to do it yeah. on my own. So I'm doing that in a joking form, mm. but it's it's the truth. Yeah. And it's like I'm silently going to other people, maybe you should keep your kids involved. Yeah. If that stripper was involved in yeah. so many fucking acts, yeah, she had <laughs> chances are yeah. she wouldn't have been on the pole. No, for sure. If that young man was involved in football, basketball, reading, and da 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 nigga, he wouldn't have had time to go on the drive-by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't have been, been able to go by his first. No, for sure. When you got kids, you definitely want to keep them involved and not just sitting in the crib. Because that's when you busy mind, you thinking about some man, shit. Man, idle time, man, is 
A lot of dumb shit happens. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense what I said? For sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to over talk. I just want to. No, one thing I, I do before I get, in, you know, saying to your backstory and stuff like that. One episode of Jamie Foxx show I always think about with you, man, is when he was about to propose to Fancy, and he was he had wrote that song, the wedding song. Yeah, he was singing it. And that's you know it cut to him. He and his mother just in tears, crying. Like, can I tell you something crazy about that episode? Put up. That was one of the first. This is a little uh, <laughs> black Negro history. Yeah, for sure. that was one of the first clips on YouTube when YouTube first came out okay. to use the word viral. Yeah. That it was one of the first clips when I didn't even know how to work YouTube. So basically when YouTube came out, remember Jamie Foxx, we were way before all this shit. Yeah. Social media and all that. Mm -hmm. Whoever decided to take that clip yeah. and throw it up on YouTube, it was like one of the first Man. Like, clips of a show that got 100 million views. Yeah. So what's crazy is Back when we were really doing that show, mm -hmm. I didn't know what goddamn views and likes yeah. and shit were. No, we just know just... millions of people were watching us every Thursday night mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. So that came back around, and it's kind of like it it re got a nigga famous again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, because that's the part. I swear, every time is he he sing his heart out about the Mary Fancy, and then he, go to him, he that much. Just, yeah. ask me, so what you think, Phil? <laughs> Here's I. Yeah. And he's like, Nick, are you crying? I'm like, Nick, I got allergies. Yeah, dog. That was classic, bro. So many people come up to me. No. Famous people come yeah. up to me, be like, that was one of that my was favorite. Crazy. That was classic. So ever. So but see, with, and I talk about this a lot when I have people on podcasts. We talk about you know TV shows stuff like that. I always feel like the Jamie Foxx show didn't get the credit it deserved. You feel me as the classic show because you you got come on you got Braston you got Jamie Foxx you got the Astro Van you know what I'm saying but I do want to bring something up that I've been talking about a lot right. that y'all messed up on or they messed up on Jamie Foxx show so when you got a last name right you get the last name his last name was King right he was related to aunt his aunt yeah her last name is King right because she married to a king right how the hell is Jamie Foxx's last name King. Like now, I don't know if you're joking with me. I'm serious. I'm being serious. Are you? Are you, are you been, saying in real life? He should not. What, what he should not. His last name should not be King. The only reason why I don't know if you're just because it's not making sense to me right now. All right, let me break it down. The aunt last name is King because she got I'm talking about on a TV show. Yes, we talk about TV show because you are really. <laughs> no, it's funny. No, I'm sorry. I don't want to switch subjects, but that's like no. You be in an elevator. I'll be in. A, I'll be in a random elevator. Say I'm in an elevator in San Diego, and two chicks. Get on the uh, get on the elevator. I don't know them from a can of paint. I just go like this, right? Oh, you mad at you me and just go there. Y'all ain't have to rape Ebony like that. Oh, yeah, and I'm I like, did, man, y'all was wrong. I'm like, what are you talking no, about? She's like, wrong. the Players Club. I was like, uh, first of all, that was a movie. It wasn't real. It was a character. Uh, I'm married. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> you, 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 I still did it. See on TV, and they Girl, act because I tell him all the time, like, dog, hold on, Jamie Foxx's last name shouldn't be King. He related to the aunt, not the uncle. Junior, his last name is King. But y'all, what's crazy is y'all niggas are really talking to me right now like it's a real talk. It's like niggas are coming to me, what up, Phil? And I'm like, nigga, who is Phil? No. Jeremy Fox, so right? I'm yeah. like, no, but, my name is Alex Thomas. Yeah, Phil but that's funny. It's a man. character on it, but that just shows it's the ultimate compliment yeah. to black people. Yeah, man. Because nigga, in their minds, yes. nah, no. nigga. You feel, nigga. Yeah, and sometimes, man, can that hurt a character sometimes? Because, like, you think about power. People hate Tyree. People hate some of these characters. I mean, at the end of the day, it's yeah. a TV show. That is a movie. It's the ultimate character of how good of an actor you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about it. That, mm -hmm. that means I sold that character to the people. Like, this is random, off the subject, but on the subject, yeah, I just yeah. gotta tell you. So, just recently, mm -hmm. my agent hit me and said, there's a big role coming up in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't say the name of the movie yet, but it's very huge, and we think it can be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, Tell me what it is. I just want to let you know up front uh, that it's a gay character. <laughs> and they asked, um, you know, would you play a gay character? Mm -hmm. And before I do this, with y'all, yeah. just let so nothing against the gay people. Oh yeah, for sure, we love them. the LBGTQ community. Hey man, I love y'all. I have family members. I have friends in that way. Nothing against y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving a real story mm -hmm. of something because you know in this day and age, goddamn now, I can't just tell them. You gotta break story. it down. You gotta, gotta break, break it down. It down. Yeah, for sure. I can't, I tell you another words, I gotta shut up. Yeah. 
I can't tell you what happened with me. You're going to think it's bashing? No. Yeah, you definitely got to break it down. People that bash, but this is just a real story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you check this as bashing, hey, I know it's not bashing, so I'm going to just tell you. No, for sure. They asked me straight up, would I play the gay gay character? And I told my agent, I told him, thanks, but no thanks. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll talk, not trying to be funny. Mm. I just I just can't play a gay character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, Rob, so first of all, you know, I, I have two sons. Yeah. I have a beautiful wife. Mm. I have a daughter. Right. It just be my luck <laughs> that I do this goddamn movie. Uh, let's say uh, it's Brokeback Mountain 2. And this shit blow up bigger than Titanic <laughs> and Jurassic Park. I said, let me explain something to you and black people. Okay. I will be that nigga for the rest of my life. life. Let me give you a good example before I tell you what happened. <clears throat> Take somebody like Alfonso Ribeiro. Mm-hmm. Take somebody like a Jaleel White. Okay. In the nigga world, that is Carlton and Steve. And Urkel. Yeah. Nigga. They will be forever. Urkel and Carlton to the end of time. Of all motherfucking time. You can be like, Carlton, you're like, no, no, it's Alfonso. Nah, nigga, you, <laughs> nigga, you Carlton. Do a dance, do a dance. <laughs> For the rest of his life, it just be my luck yeah. that I be out and about, and my black people come like, oh, they go to nigga for blow black mountain, nigga. Uh, uh-uh. Jerry, that's your name. <laughs> hey, my nigga, hey, they blew your pants out in that movie. Hey, nigga. and they use this, yeah. <laughs> Oh, nigga, they used the king shit. They blew your back out, nigga. Uh, hey, so let me ask you, nigga, how you take all of that shit in the movie? I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me let me explain, brother. First of all, that's a rough. I was just a movie, um, and, and 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 I'm not real gay in real life. And you know what the average nigga in America would say? No, no yeah, nigga, exactly, exactly. you did that shit too good, man. Hey, nigga, you Jerry, nigga, you Jerry, ever, nigga, nigga in the mountains, nigga, that's ever, you. man. Damn, and I just, I just don't want to deal with that. Yeah, man, just be my luck. I get the Oscar for the nigga that exactly, got exactly, exactly, forever. That's you, <laughs> Jerry. Yeah, nigga, you ain't got no booty on left. <laughs> if I ran the train on your ass, yeah. Hey, nigga, man, I don't think for, that. for a long time. We 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 thought about Stacy, uh, my man who played uh, DeAndre. Um, oh, I'm forgetting his name, but he played in that uh the movie Master P Lockdown. Oh, okay. And forever, I think he was, you know, what I'm saying tarnished with that <laughs> reputation of being the person who got yeah. raped by the white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De- 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 DeAndre, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't so want I, that in my life, man. It is a decision I'm making again. Nothing against them. Yeah. I just, I just don't want. To. Is that something that you like made up? You know what I'm saying? When you first came into the whole acting world, like I would never do a role like that. That's just something, even even in the in my younger days of Hollywood, mm-hmm. it came up two or three times. I mean, I, I've even had, you know, agents trying to, well, you know, Martin were addressing this and yeah. this is not Okay, that's them. Mm-hmm. Those are my boys. I love them. Yeah. I'm just not doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And nothing against, because, you know, it's, it's kind of messed up now because people are like, uh, are you saying that because I, I can't have an opinion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure. It's bad now, I can't yeah. even have an opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't. Right now, you can't. Especially with that topic, man. That's that's so erase all this shit off. Uh, Trying to get cancer because I did some niggas podcast in Detroit. Hey, yeah. hey but oh, it was funny. We was like, hold on, did you know Jamie Foxx was that was a, that was a show, motherfuckers. It was dead. I was. I've been talking about that for years, hilarious. dog. But let uh, me ask, man, get something into your, you know, not to your personal life, but just a lot of times we we deal with, you know, the whole mental health thing and mm-hmm. stuff like that, man. Is there ever a time when real life issues get in the way of your work? That it's like hard to perform because you got so much going on. Mm-hmm. Do you can you blot that out and be like, all right, I'm on stage or I'm on this show, and I let that go until I'm done? Or I, I can I would be lying to you if I told you it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Find me somebody that's not going through something. Mm-hmm. We're all human. Yeah. Um, it comes down to what makes us. You know, uh, I don't know if I want to say the word special, but athletes, entertainers, mm-hmm. we have to work through that. You still have a job to do. Mm-hmm. And obviously there's some things that are exceptions or whatever, but uh, I'm not going to lie to you, man. The stage is my sanctuary. Yeah. The stage is my therapy. Mm. I could be going through some bullshit in my life and I have, mm. and I will continue like anybody else. For sure. Yeah. But it's like, man, the stage is damn near like my drugs. You know, people say like, yeah, I do drugs. To, yeah. Take away pain. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, nah, that's just, we all know that's going to make it work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you come down from being high, you're going to be back in that space again. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, a lot of times, man, when I get on stage, it's like, say I'm on stage for an hour. I got to do an hour tonight. Mm-hmm. Everything else is wiped out. I'm not thinking about it. Yeah. I'm not thinking about it. Right now, I'm thinking about entertaining you guys, mm-hmm. doing what I do, 
and it brings me peace of mind. But yeah, there's been a lot of times when you know I have to tape a show or do a movie or I gotta perform in front of five thousand people. And there's days it's just like I'm going through some fucked up shit right now. No, yeah. And it's like I don't feel like telling anything. Yeah, no, for sure, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But nigga. They paid me. Yeah, and they don't they, care they, about they, what you they, want. They do. gave me uh, an advance and, uh, you know, yeah, tell send a deposit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to work. You no, know what I mean? Sure, well, sure. And you would never know that I'm going through shit. And a lot of times, as comics, sometimes that pain will come out on stage. And that's another way mm. to vent. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's something I'm going to tell y'all both right now. Mm. That the average black man in America would probably never, he would probably keep this a secret. He would probably keep it to himself and he would never tell anybody. But I feel like sometimes as comics, that's my donation to the world mm -hmm. to either help you with what you're going through or in my case, bring laughter. Because there's a saying, laughter is healing. It is. It when is. I get up in front of an audience every night, let's say there's 150 people there tonight. I don't know what everybody's going through in this room. Mm -hmm. But if everybody stood up one by one and told you, there about to be some traumatic shit. <laughs> no, for there. sure. Yeah, like damn, I don't know. Some deep shit. I can't ask. Yeah. What am I supposed to do when they say give it up for Alex Thomas? I'm a, I'm supposed to make you laugh for an hour, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of times, as comics, like our people come up to me and they'll be like, "Man, you know, we just buried my mom yesterday, or mm -hmm. we just lost somebody into this, or my cousin just got shot." Man, we came here to laugh and get our minds off of it. And brother, thank you. Yeah. Man, I, I thought there was gonna be no way I'd smile. For a long time. Yeah, you did. So it's my way. Yeah. I'm not a doctor, but that was my way of helping you heal. Mm -hmm. Right. But a lot of times, to get back to my point as a comic, sometimes you just got to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let that shit out. And maybe somebody in the room can relate to me. If yeah. they can't, they can't. But if not, they're not. So with that being said, it really messed me up, man, when we lost Chad with Bozeman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. During the pandemic, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. He was only 43 years old. Yeah, young, man. He died of. Of 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 uh you know of how do you how am I gonna say it? I got one of these uh cancer, but it was uh I got to I'm looking for the word. Yeah, I can't even help you right now. I'm trying. To... The word is uh prostate cancer. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, couldn't figure it. Prostate cancer. I did my homework, mm -hmm. and I found out that prostate cancer is like damn near one of the number one killers of black men in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually they tell you you have to get your prostate checked at 50. Mm. He was only 43. Yeah, man. So a light went on in my head. I was like, first of all, I have a beautiful black wife, mm. three beautiful black children. I need to be here for them. Exactly. I'm not going to be like so many black men in America that wait for something to happen. Then go to the hospital. Then go. Yeah. So yeah. I said, I'm going to get this shit done. Yeah, you just, so, nigga. And that's how we do. We sit there with big ass, <laughs> just sitting there with a leg the size of a goddamn right. tree, and not realizing uh, it could be diabetes. Exactly. So, I, like one of the jokes I did on stage, I said two things a nigga uh, has to go to the doctor for, and that's a gunshot or a goddamn root canal. Yeah, for sure. Cause nigga, they, you can't fix that. Yeah, no. They got to that. Shit gonna hurt. That yeah. shit gonna hurt. So, long story short, after that happened with him, mm -hmm. brother. I went and got my prostate checked. Yeah. I got a colonic <laughs> and a colonoscopy. You got the triple three. I got the I got the three peak, nigga. Yeah, when I tell you, uh, there was more activity in my ass than a RuPaul picnic, nigga. They was up in me during the goddamn pandemic. Y'all niggas are laughing your ass off, but I'm telling the truth because I'm trying to save niggas' booty no, holes sure. and, no. they, and they and they lie. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's something that needs to be talked about. Yeah, when man. I tell you I have a brand new asshole right now, I got a, nigga, I got a 2023 butthole, nigga. You understand? But I have a new born new, new, asshole. New and improved. Nigga, new and improved. And yeah. I tell the story and niggas laugh like you guys are right now. But at the end of the day, yeah. you see how real it is. You could be the biggest gangster on the planet. Oh, for sure. Nigga, your asshole yeah. is not safe. Yeah, exactly. yeah, Nigga, you could have three Glocks. You could have motherfucker yappers. <laughs> your ass did 10 years in jail. Nigga, tattoo tears, no. two bullets. But nigga, your asshole is swollen. Yeah, yeah. You need to get your a check. Your prostate is the size of a grapefruit, nigga. Man. You know what I mean? So long story short, I tell the story. And just to you brothers sitting here in front of me, I'm not afraid. I know there's millions of people watching right now. It's like this. I walk them through the process. Yeah. Prostate check. 30 seconds, bro. Mm -hmm. It was Real only, quick. It was only 30 seconds. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to lie. 
I was very uncomfortable. No, for sure. Being naked in a, in a room with a whole nother nigga yeah, right here. For sure. I had a little rude, I had a rude ass doctor. Yeah, that, this that, nigga was like, okay, bend over. I'm like, God. Damn, you ain't gonna just meant to. You just want me to bend over? And I didn't know how to bend. I didn't know. You never, you never been in position before. I, I'm like, nigga, do I put my hands on my knees? Do I, do I grab my ankles? Like, I really didn't know. And he was like, he was like, arch your back. I'm like, nigga, come on, for real. Yeah, like, yeah. what I got to do? Look back at it? Yeah. Do I look back at it? And like, yeah. out of nowhere, out of nowhere, bro, he's like, okay, you're fine. Yeah. And I was like, what do you, like, what do you mean I'm fine? Like, did you, did you do it? Yeah, you, you done? He's like, I'm done. And I was like, nigga, was, I didn't feel like it. Yeah. Was I, was I that easy? Like it, neither, either this nigga had uh, uh, five pinky fingers, like some small ass fingers, or he used a whole lot of lube on me. I didn't know because I didn't hear. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. He's just like, Duh. all right. And the next thing you know, he's just walking out the room. He yeah. said, "You can get." And you confused now, nigga. I'm I'm standing here. I'm I'm standing here. Like I'm like. <laughs> I, I mean, are you gonna call me? Like I didn't know what the fuck was going on, right? But, so that was my prostate check. Checked out perfect, right? This nigga is laughing his ass off. So then the next one, I went and got uh, a colonic. Yeah. You know what a colonic is? That's, uh, explain That's when they clean your asshole yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I remember Charlamagne was talking about that. All it is, is warm water. Yeah. Right? Just think about it. Are you a car man? You like cars? Uh, no. You in the cars? Are you in the cars? Would, would you go 15 years? Oh, it, the, no, hell no. Hell would, no. Would you Would you go uh, uh 10 years without changing your oil, nigga? Hell no. Right? So you got to look at your body the same way. So yeah. imagine your whole life, Damn. you ain't cleaned your asshole out. This nigga... This, this nigga's laughing with his ass off. He sticks a clear tube up your ass. Again, nothing around it, right? And all they're doing... Hold on, hold on. When you, you say stick it up your it's ass... It's a clear tube. Okay. I mean, you ain't no asshole. I got, I'm giving you my asshole story, nigga. <laughs> well, you think you put it in my ear? You feel, I'm saying you feeling like you... Nigga, they put a bunch of lube on oh. it. They slide it in you. <laughs> no, I'm scared, y'all, nigga. <laughs> I'm painting the picture, nigga. They slide this bitch inside you, and right? And you let him know... When you're relaxed, he goes like, relax your muscles. <laughs> relax them, relax them chair. Right? And all they're doing is putting warm water. Mm -hmm. And when you can't take it anymore, like you feel full, yeah. you go, okay. You say, okay. Mm -hmm. And he pushes it out. Yeah. Are you ready for another one? Fills you up. So basically, they're filling you up, pushing it out. Filling you up, pushing it out. Now, here's the cold part. Yeah. You're laying there, and right in front of your face is a huge, clear too. Yeah. So you are seeing all the shit of the oh bullshit God, in your filthy ass. So nigga, I'm seeing shit. I'm looking there and I'm like, nigga, I am nasty. Filthy. <laughs> I am nasty, nigga. I'm seeing, I'm like, nigga, what, what? Liquor? <laughs> I was seven when I had that. I was like, you got oxtails, green and red meat. Duh. Two years. I'm like, what is that? A nickel? And you swallowed this go when I was three. Like, nigga, all this shit's coming out of me. But when I'm done. 15 pounds lighter. You feeling good. Got all the toxins out of my body. Yeah. Niggas' complexion was yeah. incredible. People don't realize Man. you are what you eat mm -hmm. and all those toxins are in your body. Yeah. What, you too gangster to be clean, nigga? <laughs> yeah. You too gangster to be healthy in this bitch? Yeah. Right? So the last one was the colonoscopy. Okay. Now that, I admit, I was terrified. Yeah. I was scared. My wife had See, to I'm scared all three of you know what? <laughs> My wife had to hold my hand because that... Took an hour. Yeah. And on top of the hour, they gotta put you to sleep. Yeah. And I've never been sedated in my life. I've okay. never had surgery, knock on wood. Yeah, yeah, never. Sure. So they had to put me out. And I'm not gonna lie, nigga, your boy was terrified. Right? Uh -oh. And I was like, so you know, I'm really like, so walk me, like, what what what's what's about to happen? Mm. She's like, Well, don't worry about anything. The doctor's like, we're gonna put you in propofol first. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Propofol. Yeah. Nigga, when you say the word propofol, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say propofol? I also think about the butt. <laughs> Neither one of you niggas know? I was Ready? First thing that comes to the world's mind when you say propofol, mm -hmm. it's a nigga named Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he was on every night yeah. to go to sleep. Right? Yeah. And I was like, so that scared the fuck out of me because... Rest in peace. That nigga didn't wake up. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then she thought she was being fucking funny yeah. to try to calm me down. She's like, no, you don't have to worry. All you have to do is count from 10 backwards. Mm. And by five, you'll be in Never Never Land. I'm like, bitch, huh? that shit's not yeah, fun. That's some bullshit. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That Michael Jackson's land. Never Never Land. Yeah, yeah, that's some bullshit. Yeah. And so now I'm not believing her, right? So I'm like, yeah, whatever. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Go. Out of here, dude. Nigga, when I tell you, 
it was the best sleep yeah. I've got in 15 years. I was asleep for one hour, bro. I feel like forever. I felt like I was asleep for six months. <laughs> Nigga, when I tell you I woke up a new man, man, I woke up white with perfect credit. Man, so you so all as soon as you seen that happen, you got all three done. Got it all done. It fucked me up. It really did. Yeah. No, I, I believe that. It like, fucked me up, man, when I was like, dude. Just... So when you see somebody go through something and pass away, that's when you start thinking about your life and what you need to do, how man. you need to take care of yourself. And I'm trying to tell black men, brothers that are watching, mm -hmm. man, you heard it through a comedy way of what I just said. Yeah, but that's real stuff. That's the truth. No, for sure. For sure. I, everything for sure. I just told you, I didn't make that shit up. Yeah, yeah, it's real stuff. Yeah, man. But it feels great when the doctor tells yeah. you. Nigga, you're scot free. Yeah, yeah, you got no. a brand new ass on the for your life, nigga. Yeah, it's just clean as a whistle. Now go have some ham hock. Exactly. Go get you some hog and cheese. Um, you mentioned Michael Jackson. Yeah. And you know, that's a great icon. Yeah. I ask this question to people. If you want to go ahead and just introduce yourself, Alice Thomas, but through a song or an album, what would that be? Like I you, like Jesus, you make you asking like complex questions. Like, like I'm just gonna say, wait, say that question. One more time. An album or a song that'll be my introduction to you. Without using words, you are gonna play a song, and this is Alice Thomas. Oh, or this album. I already know. This is me. Nigga, I got the answer. You ready? Yeah. Victory lap. Mm -hmm. Nipsey Hussle. Oh, oh shit, song that's grinding all my life. Oh, all my life, grinding all my life. Yeah, hell yeah. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Come on, man. Like, like rest in peace, Nip. Not just because I'm a West Coast dude and I knew him and he was cool. Man, first of all, that was an incredible album. No, for sure. Uh, yeah. Second of all, it's just really kind of like the story of my life. I'm 30 years in, and I'm still grinding. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a saying, I hustle like I'm broke. Yeah. And that's what keeps me relevant. That keeps me still here. Mm -hmm. Period. For sure. No, that's a great song. You know, great, that was a great answer. Yeah. See, I've been asking that question. People ain't, that's probably the best answer I ain't got so far. So, <laughs> over there. Gee, thanks. Now, uh, staying on music... Man, you was on one of the biggest debut albums ever. 50 Cent, Get Rich Without Trying, man. You really did your homework on me. Yeah, bro. back down. This nigga really is the feds. Hey, this, Mike Larry this said the nigga, same This thing. nigga, them people. Yeah, man. That, but and you know what? Because when I first heard that album came out, I want to say 2003. 2002, 2002, yeah. Okay, so I was like... Because the only reason I know because we had just got off the Up and Smoke tour. Yeah. And Dr. Dre was like, hey, man, uh, I got something for you. Yeah, like, yeah. what? You got, I got this brand new... Nigga, he's a rapper. I was like, what's his name? He's like 50 Cent. I was like, cool. I never heard of him. Yeah, for sure. That's like, crazy. Like, like, you, you're my boy. You're my friend. And nigga, yeah. and you're an icon, nigga, whatever. He's right. like, and I'm going to give you $10,000 in a brand new pool tape before you do house. Yeah, I'm Basically, with it. Dr. Dre bought my first house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not going to lie. Up and Smoke, after we got off the Up and Smoke tour, it was the most money I had ever made. And, and, and the Detroit tip, huh? that was Eminem's introduction to the world, for real. For real. It, was, it, was it was Eminem's introductory to the world. Shout out to D12. Shout out to Proof. Rest in peace. I got really, you know, rest in peace. I got... I was close with Proof. Mm -hmm. I was close with Eminem all from the Up and Smoke tour. Yeah. And I go this down, you know, that Detroit always showed me love. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, I got off that tour. It was on some rock star shit. Like yeah. literally the same promoters and people that put that tour on, they're the same motherfuckers that did like Guns N' Roses and, and Rolling Stones and Earth, Wind and & Fire. That was Frankie huge, Bays. man. I remember the DVD going around. We had the bootleg, but... DVD. It was the number one... <laughs> speaking of that, it was the number one selling DVD no, of for sure. time in hip-hop sure. history. And I always thank Dre for that because, you know, he had did something that had never been done. He had mm -hmm. a comedian host the biggest rap tour of all time. So that... That that boosted my confidence. Ego on that boosted. Man, like I was it. like, nigga, there is no club on planet Earth I can't do because <laughs> I'm getting up here and ripping thirty thousand people every night. Mm -hmm. That is that was unheard of at that time. Yeah, that was before the kings of comedy and all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And Shout out to you all of those people, uh, uh, all rappers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but no, with that song though, like man, that that was that was like one of the biggest debut albums ever for a rap artist. And it it was a lot of controversy on the album because he was going up against you know Ja Rule and and uh, Irv Gotti and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite sure at that time when you recorded that skit, you probably didn't know about the beef they had. It's crazy. I wasn't hip to the beef. Uh, but, but Dre, all he told me was this guy, 50 Cent, yeah. who I had never heard of, has a beef with Ja Rule. I knew who Ja Rule was. Ja, ja Rule was a star. Yeah, for sure. Biggest thing. One right of the there. biggest yeah. things popping at that time. Yeah. And uh, I had met Ja Rule a couple of times, but I didn't have no beef with anybody. I'm mm -hmm. just a young comedian trying to do more shit. Mm-hmm. 
And this nigga gonna give me ten thousand dollars? Yeah, I'm with it. Thirty seconds yeah, of jokes, yeah. nigga. Where's the mic? <laughs> yeah, for sure, I'm with it. I, I didn't know. Again, kind of like I said when I was at the Fresh Prince of Bel Air all those years. Mm. I didn't know this was gonna end up being one of the biggest shows of all time. I didn't know when I went in the booth that day yeah. that this nigga's gonna sell 50, 14 million albums. For sure. He's about to be one of the biggest rappers of all time. Mm -hmm. He's, you know what I mean? I didn't know. I was just doing what I do, mm -hmm. and then later on it comes out like yeah. nigga, you know. You're a part of yeah. one of the biggest rap albums of all time. I mean, nigga is gunshots on the album. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The nigga has been shot nine times. Yeah, yeah. Everything was gangster on that. Yeah. And I'm the one piece of comedy. Big things come in small packages. Holla. <laughs> I'm a 12 degree pink belt. I will slice and dice his ass. I'm a 12 degree pink belt. Woo talk. I didn't know that shit. Hey, and when I first heard it, I didn't know who it was, because like I said, I'm like in 11th grade. But then when I revisited years later, like, damn, that's, that's, that's my Nobody daughter. knew it was Alex Thomas, and Dr. Dre purposely left my name on Exactly, I looked on the credits because too. Because he uh -huh. wanted it to really sound like, just so you know the real inside, mm -hmm. all Dre did that day was play me a 20-second snip mm -hmm. of some gay dude mm -hmm. that called into the radio station, mm -hmm. whatever the big radio station was in New York at that time, basically claiming he's Ja Rule's boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know if it was real. We don't know if it was real, really? but he was like, nigga, let's do this. Yeah, so and all the nigga said was, y'all need to leave Jeffrey alone. That's my boo. Yeah, you just took it. And, just... and nigga, I'm the one that ran with his real name. Jeffrey Atkins is <laughs> my, you know, I did my homework. And yeah. The rest was history. Now, now doing that, what you like, you know, because a lot of times, man, you, you, you do comedy. You gotta be a little nervous, man. Like, would you walk around like? I didn't realize it back then. Yeah. I didn't realize it until I heard Jaru hated me, nigga. Yeah, yeah. But he found out that that was me behind the voice. Mm -hmm. But again, nothing against Jaru. I didn't even know about the beef. Mm -hmm. I was just Dr. Dre's my friend, nigga. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, "Yo, I got some funny shit. Can yeah. you do it, man?" You know what I mean? That's dope, so. man. That's dope. Now, um, I do want to speak on um, Dwayne's. Because I the Wayans, like, yeah, family I like they don't um get you know as a family shit, mm -hmm. man. Damn, they they like big time, man. They 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 birthed a lot of people's careers through Living Color and through movies and stuff like that. And you was a part of a uh, Don't Be a Miss in South Central. Hey man, I was I was the honorary Wayans, yeah, <laughs> for ten to fifteen years of my life. Yeah, and they're yeah. still my brothers to this day, for sure. For like sure. literally every single one of them. Yeah, uh, Wayans, yes, they that we talk about flowers. Mm -hmm. That's the other people that I would give their flowers because they paved the way in so many ways mm -hmm. for black comedy. Black comics, mm. uh, the culture, yeah. uh, you know, from In Living Color with Keenan all the way down to the Wayans Brothers show that I worked on for all those years. And I just done a lot of, even the Marlins show on Netflix, they've yeah. always involved me with different things. So yeah. I love that family. Yeah, and man. About yeah. It. yeah. And then, like I said, Keenan could have held people hostage to Living Color, could have them sign a 360 deal. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> Look who blew up from that. Man, Jeff Lopez, Jamie Foxx, David Allegrip. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, yeah. man. I mean, just so many. But yeah, he was just, he had a great eye for talent. And that's what uh, gave me a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a young comic in the game because I did do my homework. Yeah. And I know that he was part of the Black Pack. For the people that don't know the Black Pack, the Black Pack was him, was basically Eddie Murphy and all his friends. Yeah, yeah, Robert Townsend. Raw, Robert Townsend. Yeah. Paul Mooney, rest in peace. Yeah. You know what I mean? So many, Arsenio, all the people that uh, generations looked up to and it, and it felt good as a young comic coming up mm -hmm. in those times, getting the respect of all those icons. Yeah, yeah. And that, and kind it's of more to what I am to this day. Yeah, legendary. I'm the dude a lot of these young guys look up to. Yeah, it's, it's legendary because, like I said, man, like you birthed a family of of stars, and then you got the ones that don't get talked about that still doing work behind the scenes. Come on, the offsprings that came from that. Yeah, you got the nephews and the nieces that yeah, still yeah. doing stuff like. They First of all, there's about nine hundred thousand ways. Sure. Every year, I'm meeting a new one. Yeah. I'm like, they go, are you? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, uh, Ken is my great great grandfather. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Oh, you know, Alex, I'm Damon Jr. I'm like, I remember when you went, you went that space. Yeah, man. Set. Yeah. So, yeah. Shout and out was to like, the Wayans family. So, with comedy, that was my introduction to comedy. I was young. I was like four or five. But I remember mm -hmm. my dad watching the Wayans Living Color. You know what I'm saying? Um, Damon Wayans and Robin Harris. Absolutely. Those are my... And so, I watched Baby. Shout out to Robin Harris. So, I, the question I get a lot about Robin, <clears throat> we started at the same comedy club. Okay. Well, wow. Uh, it was called the Comedy Act Theater. Mm -hmm. It was the one and only black comedy club in L.A. Mm -hmm. So people, when I do podcasts and stuff like this, man, what was it like being yeah. around Robin? I always tell people the honest truth. Mm -hmm. I started a week after he died. Oh, 
Damn. So I never got to meet him. Damn. But I was a fan mm -hmm. watching and always hearing because it was LA and I knew a bunch of people that were 21 already mm -hmm. and they were going to see him every week at the Comedy Act Theater. So I never got to meet him. I knew all about his work. I was the generation right after him. For sure. Okay. So right after Robin, the new host mm -hmm. at the Comedy Act Theater, it was two guys. Joe Torrey and D.L. Hughley. Okay, okay, legends. So those are the dudes I came up with. Is this a bad comparison, man? I just thought about that with Robin Harris and Bernie Mac. Because it seemed like they gave you a real life. You know what it is? Very similar. Mm. Cut from the same cloth. Mm. Um, and yeah, that, that that that's fair because they were both super funny and two of the rawest. Yeah, for sure. Keeping it real to who they truly are. Yeah. Took that to the stage and took it to the beach. Yeah, and that's why I say, yeah, because it was like they gave you a real life and just didn't hold nothing back. Hey, man, they didn't sugarcoat shit. Yeah, man. They were who they were, and they were both hilarious. Speaking of Bernie Mac, when you Ice Cube did that girl dirty, man, you know, but talk, give me a Bernie Mac. Like, how was it working Bernie with him? Bernie was really, uh, Bernie, really cool. Uh, what's one, a funny one story? Way, one way Bernie and I uh, had in common, believe it or not, we were mm -hmm. both golfers. Okay. Bernie loved golf. Uh, we played a couple times, and he... Uh, started before me, but that was around the time I started. I started in 97. Mm. So people always ask me, when did you start golfing? Mm. And I'm like, the year every nigga in America started golfing. Tiger Woods came. Tiger Woods came around. <laughs> I go up and, 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 and won the Masters. Next thing I know, a nigga is playing golf. That's and that's up. why I have the name to the day. I'm the ghetto Tiger Woods. Yeah. They call me Inglewoods. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm bullshitting? Uh, go to go to Inglewoods golf page. If anybody watching right now, yeah. they'd be like, oh, the nigga really has his own page. Like, for real. I'm, Ingle you look it up, I'm, I am, Ingle, I-N-G-L-E, Woods, W-O-O-D-S. So if you put that up on screen, make sure they know about my golf page. Yeah. Funny Man Alex Thomas is me, the actor, the comedian, the dad, the father, the fly-ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh, but I'm Ingle Woods yeah. is my complete You, you get serious on there? Nigga. <laughs> like, just so you know, I'm actually, my show is being shopped right now. Yeah. It's basically, it's called Tea Time with Inglewoods. Okay, that's dope. And it's me going around America, playing golf mm -hmm. with all my African-American and minority superstar and Hall of Fame black golfers. Because a lot of people don't know there's a lot of us that love the game, mm. but didn't make it to the pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we love the game. Yeah, y'all do So it's good, just yeah. me trying to push in the folk, the culture forward. Did you find it? I'm Inglewoods? Yes, sir. <laughs> so that's my golf life. Yeah. Now, um, we, we didn't talk about Bernie. We didn't talk about, you know, the Wayans and stuff. Mm. Comedy now compared to back in the day. Like, do, like even with you now, because you, you still here, you still doing it. Yeah. Or, do you got to be more, like, worry? You got to be more conscious of what you say. Compared to back then, compared yeah, you saw me do it right yeah. here on the show. So, right no, face. I can get a goddamn non disclosure. So, how do that hurt? I tell the joke now. How do that hurt you now? It hurts because it's like you got to walk on pins and needles. Mm. You can't, as much as they say, keep it real, mm. you can only keep it real to an extent. Now, if you are the type of nigga, and I'm not going to name a few that are out there mm. that don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> Great nigga, all you're going to, you're going to be limited to your podcast, and that's it. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But if you're trying to really get on ABC, yeah. CBS, NBC, and all these other networks that can change your life and make you a goddamn billionaire, mm -hmm. you got to watch your mouth. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. take some a classic like Raw, Eddie Murphy. He couldn't do that today. No, hell no. Fuck no. Nigga, there would be 100,000 different communities out yeah. in front of the parking lot trying to shut him down. And it's unfortunate because comedy was like the last of the frontiers yeah. of being able to speak your mind. Um. It's not stopping me. Mm. To be honest, it's not even really hindering me because my jokes is really my life. Mm -hmm. So I really so, kind of don't yeah, cross that yeah, bridge so as much. Yeah. But unfortunately, like I just had to tell you the story about how they asked me if I played gay role. Yeah, you had to put the whole it's disclaimer. It's nothing against yeah. gay people. It's just, nigga, I would never do a gay role. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. I don't want... That's just not what I want. Mm. I don't care if you're gay or you're straight. You, you have certain things that you'll do and you won't do either. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. It'd be like me getting mad at a gay guy. Oh, really? So you ain't gonna play a straight nigga now? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You know, that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. The straight community, we upset. Yeah, we mad, yeah. Like, no, that's Boy, kind of. your opinion. Yeah, no, for sure. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it shouldn't be nothing so, wrong with your opinion. You, like, you, right. ain't, you ain't bashing nobody. You just saying... Like, in a minute, in a minute, they're gonna tell us you can't have an opinion. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> pretty, pretty soon. You know it's gonna be like that, man. It's gonna be like that. Yeah. So, and like I, said, and, and I just tell true stories. Like, for example, people, the question I get the most... How do you come up? I, I thought you were going to ask me. I guess I'm just beating you to it. What's that? Because I get the question everywhere I go. 
So how do you come up with material? Mm -hmm. Comics come up with people really genuinely yeah, yeah. ask that. And I tell people, my answer is just always the same. Traveling. Yeah. I travel the world. Man, comedy has enabled me to see the globe, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm a nigga from South Central LA. No, for sure. This wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. Closest I got to uh, airplanes was watching them fly over the hood. Yeah, like damn. When, when they I didn't are. see an airplane until I was 21 years old. Yeah. You understand? My daughter is seven years old. And she got more passport stamps than grown ass niggas I know. No, I asked her the other day, Halo. I said, Halo, tell me some of the places you've been. Yeah. And she's like, Daddy, I've been to Jerusalem, Jamaica, yeah. London, Tel Aviv, Chuck E. Cheese. I was like, Chuck E. Cheese, what? Yeah. So the first thing that went to my mind was when people ask me, mm -hmm. how do I come up? I tell them travel. Stories. Yeah. My life is like me just telling you stories right now, right? So like just last week, I do 38 cities a year. I've been over the world, all over the world. I thought I've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I ended up in Colleen, Texas last week. Oh, good. Have you ever heard of Colleen, Texas? Colleen, Texas? It's, it's central Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a very small town, but it's known for two things. What's that? Uh, the biggest military base in the world, okay. Fort Hood, and it's the number one city in America for STDs. Damn. Nigga, when you get to the airport, there's a big ass billboard that says "Got real." <laughs> right. Welcomes you to Colleen, Texas. Nigga, I put on a condom in baggage claim. Let <laughs> me go to wrap up right now. I, I, and I kept that bitch on for two days till it was time to leave. Nigga, I didn't want to trip and fall. They leave the league in cooties, nigga. <laughs> But no, man, no, that's that's fast like traveling. Stories. Yeah, you you gotta have. You can't just be on your block. You can't just be in your neighborhood. That's with music. That's with anything. If you you don't have I'm no trying experience. to encourage brothers to travel. Mm. Then you'll have more to talk about. For sure. What was that? For sure. For sure. So now, was you, you ain't you know a lot of comments, man, that came up through the grind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they seeing that people now coming up. You know, social media. Mm -hmm. They post a you know saying a little funny skit. They mm -hmm. blow up the next day. Mm -hmm. Were you one of those dudes that embraced the new comedy, or you was like, huh? And now they call themselves comedians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, so with that being did, said, did you embrace it, or you yeah. like y'all need y'all need to do y'all work? Thank you, sir. You feel me? So it's like this. I'm not the triple OG that knocks these new this new generation because I understand it's a lane. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, if social media was out when I was coming up, mm -hmm. I would be using it also. For sure. And guess what? To this day, 30 years in, I still use it. Yeah. It's a tool. It helps promote. I just don't like when they call themselves comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody can trip. My grandmama can trip and fall over something funny. Yeah, exactly. Catch it on the phone. Yeah. And, and go viral and get 10 million hits, and now she says she's a comedian. Mm -hmm. But the truth comes out. Mm -hmm. When they book you, yeah, and they need you to get up there for an hour. I was just gonna ask you and that. tell jokes. And your ass got a hundred million views, but don't have one minute of jokes. Have you have you ever, have you seen that? Well, I seen it with my own fucking eyes. Yeah. I even had yeah, I'll go to do a show, and they'll be like, "Hey, Alex, um, just real quick, um, we got this uh, uh, viral Instagram comic. He's, you know, he's a sensation. Mm -hmm. He's got uh six million followers. Could he go up and do five minutes before you? Mm -hmm. Yeah." Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. How many followers did I say yet? Six million? Yeah. The nigga doesn't have six minutes. minutes of jokes. Yeah. Damn near got booed in two minutes. Uh, Coming off stage looking like he's ready to jump off a bridge. Yeah. And then ask me to oh gee, man, what I do wrong, man. Yeah. Can you can you tell me like like what I need to work on? I say, you you want me to be honest? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. First of all, you're not a comedian. Mm -hmm. I saw the clip too that sold that did a million views. Mm -hmm. That was funny. Yeah, but that's not stand up. Yeah, no, it's not comedy. What I do is an art form. Mm -hmm. You have to work at it. Yeah, what you did is almost like if you sit in front of your mama's house and there's a basketball hoop over the garage. Yeah, and you made three in a row, and your boy was yeah. holding the camera. Yeah, and when you hit them three, you looked at everybody and said. Ready for the lead? Hell yeah, sure. No, the fuck no, you're hell not. Hell no, you ain't ready. Now you're discarding that kid that's been working his whole life. Yeah. The AAU, the Dick High School, that went to college, that comes out here two hours before every game and shoots his shot. Mm -hmm. I understand I'm not hating. Yeah. It just you gotta put the work say, in. You gotta put the work in, bro. Mm -hmm. So anybody watching, they say if, if if you think I'm hating, that means you didn't listen to what I just yeah, said. No, for sure. I just said I just want them to work. Mm -hmm. And shout out to those Instagram dudes that did end up working on their craft. Now, you can call them a stand-up comic. Shout out to, like, DC Young. I was going to say, he one dude I think that really worked at it. 
And I pre and all those dudes on uh, 85 South. Yeah, he was on 85 South. All those and them niggas are funny. Clayton, all the news are funny. Oh, they funny as hell. They actually work on the craft. And all I can do is respect that. Yeah. Those are the young cats that look up to me, sure. me on, the, on their podcast, stuff like that. I love that they're working it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. If you're going to be for, or don't call yourself a comedian. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm an Instagram nigga and I be doing dumb yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I was, hey, man, you the nigga to be doing yeah, dumb shit. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm that nigga. That shit was funny. Yes, I, I watched it too. For sure, for sure. But the I, truth comes out when they yeah. comedy. No, nah, the truth come out. Yeah, like I said, with a lot of stuff when you get that one hit song, the truth come out when you got to follow it up with an album. Oh, the truth comes out when they say you're performing mm -hmm. and you never performed before. Yeah, now you out there looking crazy. You look fucking stupid. Yeah, man. Now you mentioned I moral of the story: work on your craft. Work. That's what whatever you do too. That's all I'm saying. Now, because I, I want you gonna be a dope, dope dealer, be the best dope yeah. dealer you can. You better stay, hey, study your strands. He said he just no weed. Study your strands, nigga. All right. For sure. Now, uh, you you mentioned, because I don't want to keep you too long, man, but you mentioned- Because I'm hungry as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to go smoke a cigar. So You mentioned 30 years in the game. Yes, sir. You ain't did Fresh Prince. You ain't did Jamie. You ain't did Don't Be a Menace. You was on BAPS. You was on- Players Club. Players Club. To play that game. Family Guy. Family Guy for 10 years. My brand new animated series right now on Netflix. Yeah. We're number one on Netflix right now. If you got kids between one and 10, Mm. Then you know exactly what time it is. But yeah. anybody that's you know got grown kids, they don't know yeah. about my show. That was it's called Motown Magic. Okay, it's actually the whole history of Motown through animation. Yeah. Uh, Smokey Robinson's executive producer. Okay, and I am on every episode. Uh, and what's that, name my that character's again? name is Jimmy Mac. I'm a red convertible 1965 Cadillac. <laughs> so if you go to Netflix right now, it's Motown Magic. It's Motown Magic. Now with that, uh, very educational for your children. And if you're older, you'll know every song. Now, 30 years, do you ever look back like, damn? Like, just look back like in awe like, of everything you, you have done, the people you've been around. You've been around some legends in the game. Like, Absolutely. Man, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever just reflected and looked back and like, I can't, I can't believe it? Because it, like, it seemed like a lot of stuff you, you kind of like stumbled upon, like the Will Smith thing, like him being there and Dr. Dre. I, I, am, I am the epitome of the right place at the right time. Yeah. Mixed in with talent. For sure, for sure. You definitely Because I always tell people it's kind of like when uh, preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people got it twisted. I heard it's all about who you know. Yeah, but nigga, what happens when that when Denzel comes in your face now? Yeah. What happens when Steven Spielberg meets you at at at, at a, at a uh, fucking yeah. uh, a Starbucks? How you gonna capitalize? How you gonna capitalize? Mm -hmm. You met him. Nigga gave you his number. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> can, can you follow up with anything? Nope. That's when it hits them real hard. Yeah. I have no talent. <laughs> I got six million followers. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Because it's a lot. Because I always think about when I, when me and my wife had these conversations a lot. Like, damn, I I wonder how it is to have it. Like, it's that feeling of greatness. Like, you just sitting back. Like, damn, I did that. All the hard work paid off. You know what I'm saying? It did, man. And it's something I can tell my kids when they really are old enough to understand. And uh, it kind of just makes me go, wow. Maybe that's why I am. That and, and, and Jesus Christ, because mm -hmm. I pray and I love the Lord. For sure. I'm not going to ever talk about nothing without bringing him up. Uh, why this was all possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why I'm able for my seven-year-old and my two-year-old to be to go all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. I always said I want to be able to do things for my kids that my parents weren't able to do for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't really compare myself to the other guys. I just know what I'm doing for my family and my household and my wife and my kids. For sure. That's all you can do. Anything you regret, man? Anything you look back on, like fuck, like no, no regrets. Because I don't, have, I don't have any regrets, man. I'm not that dude. Mm. I made a ton of mistakes. Yeah, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't make mistakes, mm. and I still make mistakes to this day. But thank God, again, by the grace of God, I, nothing that I've had to regret. Okay, you know what I mean. I, you know, I don't have the baby mama situation. Yeah, yeah. Never went to jail. Never was a crackhead. Never, yeah, we know never got caught up in a whole lot of stuff. That damn, I regret the goddamn pipe. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need no crackhead, no crackhead <laughs> Alex out here. I shoot that nigga in the club that night when I was 22. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of people that went through that, and again, not knocking people that did it, but I just, man, had the, Jesus on my side all yeah. these years, man. It's been it's a lot of close calls mm -hmm. in a lot of whole lot of different ways, but mm -hmm. thank God he got me through it. Yeah, give me some young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. Young nigga shit means something you believed in as a young 18, 19 year old Alex that you just look back on like you was a jackass. <laughs> I wish I'd listened more. Mm -hmm. I really, I, I, I kind of felt like I was on my own in these streets, mm -hmm. but kind of in the Hollywood streets. Okay. 
because you got to think about it. Fifteen years old, I'm 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 really kind of in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Soul Train was shot right on Sunset, nigga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the middle of Hollywood. Yeah. I got in the game early and just kind of had to learn and navigate on my own. But and that's where a lot of mistakes happen. Mm. And I wish I would have listened more. Um, but no regrets. And I would have told the older Alex would have told the younger Alex, listen more. I was so rah rah trying to just figure this shit out and yeah. niggas is gonna know me one day and I'm gonna <laughs> do it my way. But then again, that's when the Wayans came into my family mm. at a young age. Mm. And before I knew it, I was in it. Yeah. So it would have been stupid of me not to listen and learn. Yeah. But in the same breath, still work on my craft. Throughout every accomplishment in my life, it's always been stand up. Mm. I always tell people, like, you know, the beautiful thing about being a stand up comedian is, like, when you're not working, nigga, we could still make money doing stand up. No, for sure, yeah. Like, niggas in Hollywood that are just actors, mm. nigga, if they're not working, that nigga might be the dude busting your tables at the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> no, for sure, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Or shaking their ass on the pole. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Shout out to Keisha. Between auditions. Yeah, yeah. You know for what sure. I mean? As a comic, you know, even at my level now, it's like if I'm not doing a movie, if I'm not doing TV shows, you could easily make a hundred thousand dollars a year slanging these jokes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For sure. So for sure, for sure. man. Are we end everything off with a uh, drunk moment or a high moment, man? Say it again. A drunk moment or a high moment? Uh, a funny my story, my, my high moment. Uh, one of my boys' weddings, and I'm not gonna say who he is. Okay. Uh, all I know is this motherfucker fucked around and did an edible wedding cake. <laughs> what? You ever heard of that one before? No. Just imagine a whole wedding party fucked up. Yeah. Nigga, the wedding place was only 10 minutes from my house. I couldn't find my way home. Nigga, I'm on this freeway every day. Going crazy. I know exactly where my exit is, nigga. I could, I must have did six U-turns on the same goddamn freeway. And my wife was with me and we were both fucked up. Bro, bro. I will never do another edible in my goddamn life. Nigga, I feel like I was high for eight days. Man. I was like, I didn't ask for this. And I wanted edible to sue this cake. nigga. I wanted to sue this nigga. Like, Duh. what's my mama, auntie? I know. Cases? My grandma and his mother. What are you doing for the elders in the room, nigga? It, man, edibles is no joke. Niggas are coming. No, it's not. Cookie? No, nigga, I don't. No, it's not. It's not a joke at all. I won't even have a nigga bring me a coffee cake from Starbucks, man. Because <laughs> I'm thinking it's got some cushion that mother. Man, that's hilarious, man. Now, I asked a lot of people, this is the last thing for sure, because you're yeah. a comment, and making a band. Diddy had making a band. We had five people mm -hmm. made an album. Mm -hmm. If it was you and four other acts going on tour, mm -hmm. was Alex Thomas Making a band. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> comedy tour. Okay. Who's you and four of the comics that's you taking with you? Talk about with these young guys. Uh, you couldn't be talking about guys at my level, my peers. You wouldn't be saying that. You can go any, it's, anywhere. It's, but I feel like you go young. I feel I feel like because mm -hmm. you're using that same scenario. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was Diddy the superstar and all these new name young people. Mm. I couldn't sit here and do okay. my boys. Let's do it like that, then. So Kevin Hart and Mike yeah. Epps yeah, 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 yeah. And, and Dave Chappelle, who we all came up with. Yeah, so let's do it like that, then. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it like how, the younger generation. The young generation? Mm -hmm. It would definitely it would definitely be uh, like DC Young Fly. Okay. Who's really funny. And he's one of my young little homies that I think is funny as hell. Mm. Um, see, the young people right now, they probably wouldn't know them. Mm -hmm. Because they're kind of like that new. Okay. There's another dude that's hilarious, but I'm going to tell you the name is where they do their own homework and you guys can find him. A uh, cat by the name of Savvy Amusing, mm -hmm. who's hilarious. And he's actually on my podcast, which by the way, guys got to check out my podcast. Oh, yeah, sure. It's called The Funny Don't Stop Show. Mm -hmm. We're going on our 200th episode, but he's a, a young comic. But the dude is one of the funniest impressionists on the planet at Savvy Amusing. Okay. Nigga's hilarious. Okay. So uh, Savvy um dc young fly i like just hilarious okay yeah i like so her put a girl on there mm -hmm. you know different points of views mm -hmm. of different funny people out there you know mm -hmm. what i mean um and there's, there's a lot of guys right? and i hate to have to leave people out but i'm yeah. just talking about from the new young generation and my other little favorite homie is my boy's name is lewis belt okay he's out the bay Mm -hmm. Oakland, he's real, real funny too, for sure. So. Okay, that's your yeah. band. Okay, you know I used to mess with him, Kelly Man Scruncho. Scruncho's my nigga. So oh, he was funny as hell. Scruncho's an LA nigga like myself. Yeah, a little bit more gangster than me. Yeah, <laughs> man. And he's one of the dudes that came after me also. But Scruncho's super hilarious. Man, hey my man, dude. 
I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having I me. Did, when I sent that DM out, like I said, I'm like, ain't no way in hell he gonna respond back. I'm just gonna do it. And he ended up having a great show, right? Yeah, and then I- We got enough to edit and everything yeah. and have hey, some fun. I sent them, I'm like, hey, cuz, uh, Alex Thomas said he, he gonna come on the show. Like, for real, word? Like, hey, we- And he said he ain't came to the hood. Come on, man, I'm and, a real nigga. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm not no. gonna lie, I tucked in the jewels, <laughs> took my rings off and shit, <laughs> walking here like I'm homeless. Uh oh, oh nigga, 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 come on, man. I took I took off the buffs from yeah. the whole the whole shit. I'm not not wearing Cartier's uh in the hood in Detroit, nigga. Man, no, but I, I appreciate you. You're looking homeless, nigga. Yeah, nigga, you became cold everything. <laughs> but no, I appreciate you coming through, man. Cause a lot of times you got a big name, you've been around legends, and yeah. for you to come on my show, man, I appreciate that. I don't have the biggest platform, but I appreciate you coming on and showing some love. You know what I'm saying? Hey, follow me at funny man Alex Thomas. Make sure that uh, you watch my podcast, The Funny Don't Stop. It's on all platforms. Uh, my book is now number one yep. on uh, Amazon, on bestseller list. It's called The Funny Don't Stop. You know, The Funny Don't Stop is is everything with me. Mm -hmm. It's the name of my next one hour special. It's the name of my book. It's the name of my podcast. And uh, all you got to do is click the link in my bio, at Funny Man Alex Thomas. It'll take you straight to the link uh, to buy my book, The Funny Don't Stop. And everybody out there... Uh, keep watching Motown Magic. Uh, For sure. Kids will love it. It's on Netflix. And uh, make sure y'all check them out tonight, tomorrow. Uh, is, what is this going on? To ASAP. My, I got a super producer. For real? Yep. Okay. Well, yes. Tonight, two shows Punchline Comedy Club, Southfield. Uh, uh, ComedyPunchline.com is how you get the tickets. ComedyPunchline.com. And uh, two shows tonight, Saturday, uh, 7 30 and 10 30, and one show. Tomorrow night on Sunday at, uh, I believe, 7 o'clock. Okay, okay. Like I said, I appreciate you again. Shout out to everybody. Alice Thomas, podcast MVP. You already know, Voice of Detroit. We out. What up, though?